We now know Dorothy Wordsworth as the inspiration behind her brother's famous daffodil poem. Her writing is wild and lonely. Diaries, letters, scraps of life. William Wordsworth called her his eyes and his ears. We didn't realize until recently that her writing is even more full of life than his. She never tried to fit it into a structure. It was uncontrolled like wind and rain. She wasn't afraid of being lonesome. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way. Dorothy wandered alone over miles in her beloved lakes. She climbed the highest mountain in England and observed the secret hearts of many wild plants, the songs of quiet birds. In her later life, she had to be pulled about in a homemade cart to see her beloved outdoors. You can read her shockingly vivid journals today, 250 years after her birth, and see through her eyes Every leaf is a living lantern. Frost crystals transform a birch tree. The natural world through Dorothy's eyes gives equal nobility to a daffodil or a potato flower. Nothing is ordinary. And in this strange time when our movements are curtailed and we feel we have lost our freedom to move outside and see each other, one thing we might learn from Dorothy Wordsworth is to inhabit that limitless place inside ourselves where memory, vision, and appreciation, and love still have all the freedom in the world. The waves beside them danced but they Outdid the sparkling waves in glee a poet could not be but gay in such a jocund company. And oft when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils.